Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger Militia, and today I'm going to be showing you the best turbo setup for your Need for Speed Heat car build. Let's go! Alright, I know this is the part of the video where I'm supposed to say subscribe and like the video, but I don't think it's good for the channel long term. I don't want you liking it and subscribing just because I said so. I would much rather you like it because you actually liked it and subscribe if this is the type of content you genuinely want to see in the future. But that's enough preaching, let's get into it. I want to be really clear on this so listen up. My turbo recommendations are not going to help you overcome your crappy driving skills. If you're losing races, it's because you suck at driving and need to improve or your car is severely underpowered. That being said, if you're looking to have the fastest version of your car, even if the difference is only three hundredths of a second in a 0-60 to 60 test because gains are gains bruh, then grab yourself a Barks and check this out. I did some intensive testing of the five turbo options Need for Speed Heat gives us and I'm going to take you through my findings, show you some of the raw data and then give you my turbo recommendation. Since this video is all about the boost, I kept all of the other performance upgrades the same for all the tests. Here's the setup. A 73 Porsche 911 Carrera RSR with a 935 horsepower 3.6 liter V6 engine swap. Ultimate Plus crankshaft, ECU cooling and exhaust. I used the 5x3 pound NOS tanks, Super Track suspension, Elite brakes, Elite Track tires, Elite Plus clutch, Elite gearbox, and Super Track differential. For my auxiliaries, I had the NOS refill and the NOS power both at the Elite level. I didn't change anything in between the tests except for the turbo itself. And for the tests, I drove in a straight line in a controlled environment on the racetrack on a flat surface. My process was to record each pass spamming the NOS from takeoff, once while redlining and once from idle, with a different turbo option each time, and then I would go back and slow down the footage to record the times. I could have tried to test each turbo in real race scenarios, but there are way too many variables and the difference between each turbo option is super small, so the results of those types of tests would depend on a lot more than just the turbo I was using. Traffic, other race cars, etc. could have had adverse effects on the outcome of these tests. So a controlled straight line test was best for limiting the number of variables and getting an accurate outcome. In running these passes, I found that the times were faster when taking off from idle, not from a red line. So if you're drag racing your friends, don't red line the car before you take off. Alright, let's get into the results because I know that's why you clicked on this video. 0 to 60, the dual turbo, single turbo, and centrifugal supercharger had the same times at 2.3 seconds when accelerating from an idle and 2.33 when accelerating from a red line. This was the fastest 0 to 60 time recorded in the tests, with the screw and the root superchargers running a 2.33 from idle and a 2.37 when redlined. If you know anything about cars, you know that a turbo has to spool in order to force more air into the engine which then helps acceleration, while a supercharger provides almost instant power. So in a short test like a 0-60, to 60, the supercharger should win because of the turbo's lag. But this being a video game, and actually an arcade style video game, not a simulation race game like Forza Motorsport, I don't expect them to have every detail perfect and thus the purpose of this video. The game actually provides you with 0 to 60 times and it recalculates it based on the turbo that you have on the car, so let's see how close the need for speed numbers are compared to my in-game tests. For the dual turbo setup, I recorded a 2.3 second 0 to 60. Need for Speed says I should be able to run it in 2.23, which I could not achieve. The same goes for the single turbo setup. The screw and roots superchargers both show a 13 foot pound torque reduction and 47 horsepower reduction from the dual turbo, and the in game 0 to 60 times do reflect that reduction, but Need for Speed says that they should be equal at 2.23 seconds. I ran both at 2.33 seconds, which is a tenth of a second slower than what Need for Speed says I should be able to run them at. 
And lastly, the centrifugal supercharger should be able to run a 2.2 according to Need for Speed, but in the test it ran a 2.3. Not only are the numbers not even close, they aren't consistent with the descriptions of each of the turbo options. The fastest options in the game are the dual turbo and the single turbo and the centrifugal supercharger, all of which say they produce top end boost and suffer on the low end, while the roots and screw superchargers are described as being great at delivering instant boost at low speeds. You would think that those would be the best option in a 0 to 60 test, but the in game results are completely the opposite. Let's move on to the drag test. I set up a specific length that I couldn't measure in terms of feet or meters because we don't really have an odometer in the game, but I ran the car the same distance each time with a different turbo option and once again recorded the results after slowing down the footage. The test was to determine which turbo option had better top end power, and here's what I found out. Unlike the 0 to 60 test, Things turned out exactly as I expected them to. The turbos were faster and the superchargers were slower. The dual and single turbo setups were the best performing and since their numbers were identical through these tests, I decided to swap the motor and run all these tests again. I swapped it to the 936 horsepower 3.6 liter flat six and they still outperformed the other options. However, the numbers were much closer and I found a slight edge with the dual turbo setup. It ran three hundredths of a second faster in the 0 to 60 and one tenth of a second faster in the drag test, even though the single turbo setup boasts five additional foot pounds of torque and 30 more horsepower. All right, I know I just threw a bunch of numbers at you, so what's the major takeaway? I believe the dual turbo option is the best all around option for most cars. Even after swapping the engine, the dual turbo's numbers remained at the top of the heap. I'm confident that because I was only changing one variable throughout these tests, and that was the turbo option itself, the results would be consistent across all the cars and engines. Also, you can't simply trust the numbers that Need for Speed is giving you. Just because a particular part offers you more horsepower and more torque doesn't mean it will result in a faster car in game. From now on, I'm specking all of my builds with a dual turbo setup. Alright guys, that's it. I really hope this helped. Thanks for watching. Trigger out.